Hey guys, Eddie here. Thank you so much for tuning back into the channel. Super excited today to go through all the results that I've gathered uh, for our solar panel mega test. This is part two of a two part series and the final part. Uh, part one just goes through all the different types of solar panels, the different brands and the different specifications for each panel, along with the price as well. Uh, just to recap a couple things, all these tests were conducted in a real world environment, right? So out the front yard of my house, I conducted the test utilizing a bunch of uh, cloudy days and also bright sunshine days. I tried my best to pick a day or a range of days where the temperature was around 25 degrees Celsius, which is pretty much the benchmark for the testing standards when it comes to solar panels. I've conducted a variety of different tests. The main ones are with solar panels orientated uh, facing about 35 to 40 degrees towards the sun, facing true north here in Melbourne, which is the optimal uh, angle and the direction of the solar panel. I've also conducted uh, part of the test with the solar panels laying flat on the ground. Uh, there are a few benefits uh, and negatives to that as well, which we'll discuss later on in the video. And we'll also covered, uh, partially covered each solar panel in different areas as well, so high, low, all around. And just to give you guys a real world example of what you'd expect. So just a quick disclaimer, uh, some of these solar panels were, were provided to me either from uh, the company themselves, such as Blue Eddy, or from our subscribers. And I just wanna be 100% honest with you, no one's paying me to do this video. Uh, no one can dictate what I say. So, the, the, you know, some people might be a bit surprised with what I have to say, but it is 100% honest. This video is purely educational. I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm just here to provide you some information and some facts that I've gathered along the ways, and hopefully you guys can learn something out of this as well. Prior to any good test, uh, to set the benchmark and to set a fair and consistent playing field, I've washed all the solar panels with warm soapy water. I've dried them all, I've um, done that twice for each panel, so there should be a nice, clear, consistent uh, theme in, to, in, in relation to the, the quality, or the, the, I should say the cleanliness of the panel. However, some of the panels weren't brand new, and some of them are, so I factor that in to the final decision that I make in terms of which one I recommend for you guys, and also with the outputs that the manufacturers claim. Just one thing to note with the hardcore panels, they produce uh, allegedly more than 10 amps, and a lot of these uh, Blue Eddy units can only take up to 10 amps worth of solar input. And just to back up the findings and the facts that I gathered, I've also redone these tests uh, utilizing our camper trailer, which has got a Victron MMPT uh, unit. I've also triple checked all these figures with uh, another uh, CTEC DC25, I think it's called. It's another MMPT uh, dual battery system and I've depleted my battery in the camper trailer to the exact same level each time, again, just to get 100% consistent result, and this was over a number of days as well. And one of the most interesting parts about this test, uh, there were essentially two parts. Um, I've laid the solar panels down flat on the ground, and I've also raised the solar panels up to the optimal angle, I suppose, to the sun uh, here in Victoria. And the reason for that is, a lot of the times we set up camp and you'll disappear for a little bit and you know the weather changes it might start raining might the wind might pick up and you get a bit paranoid about leaving your solar panels at camp so i know personally a lot of you guys pack up your solar panels as you leave um, but you know you can always lay them down flat and peg them down again in part one i talk about different types of panels and with the eyelet setups that we have available with the panels that i've tested after all this testing i do recommend if you're going to leave your solar panels unattended to lay them flat and peg them down. As a result, uh, as you'll find out later in the video, aren't too dissimilar from keeping them raised up. All right guys, we'll get straight into the uh, figures. So I've, uh, bear with me while I refer to my notes. Uh, this is just a summary again, this was the, all these tests were conducted over a number of days use, utilizing both the Bluetti uh, battery systems. So I've got three different types of them. I've used my camper trailer uh, and a Victron MMPT to charge a AGM battery from consistent levels again over and over again. So this was the max result I got uh, consistently. There were some peaks, but I'm not going to bore you with the details and all the graphs and the data logging, but essentially we'll start with uh, the cheapest unit on test, which is the King's 120 watt folding solar blanket. 
The flat max wattage that I could obtain from these panels was 70 watts. And when I raised that panel up, the max I could achieve with this was 72 watts. So it's, it's a fairly consistent uh, difference between the two. And when it was partially shaded, the best we could achieve was about 30 watts, which is fairly consistent with uh, almost half of the max values. The next panel along the lineup was the King's 200 watt folding solar blanket. And the result of this, the flat max were 119 watts. Raised was 122. And the really surprising, disappointing thing for this panel was every time I tried to partially shade this panel, it would almost uh, fail, right? So not only with the Bluetti stuff, but even with the uh, MMPT and the Victron and also the CTEC, they require a minimum voltage for the uh, solar generation to kick in. The, the King's 200 watt panel, every time I covered more than 10 or 20% of the panel, it, it just wouldn't produce any, any power. So I'm not sure if it's the way it's wired in or whether uh, there's an issue with this solar panel, but um, look, the results of the results, like I said, didn't, I've conducted these results three times and the same result each time. So yeah, a bit disappointing. So the next one is the King's 250 watt folding solar panel. So this is the solid one with the glass uh, face. Flat, that achieved 162 watts. And in the raised position, it was 191 watts out of the claim 250. And shaded, the highest I got consistently was 85 watts, which is a great result. So the next one on the lineup was the hardcore 300 watt folding solar blanket. Uh, this one here produced 170 watts flat, 191 watts raised. When it came to partial shading, the best I could get was 130 watts. So again, a little bit off the claim, 300 mark, uh, 300 watt mark, I should say. But we'll get to this in a little bit. And last but not least, we've got the Blue Eddy MP200. So that's a 200 watt rated solar panel. Flat, I got 160 watt uh, consistent max from that and raised 192 watts, which is very, very close to the 200 watt claim panel. Partially shaded, the best we could achieve was 89 watts, which is again close to that 50% of the max. So not a bad result all in all from the Blue Eddy. The conclusion with these solar panels, and I wanna say straight out, it really depends on what you're gonna use these solar panels for, okay? And what I mean by that is, obviously they're all used to generate power for our portable uh, camping equipment, but the main thing to consider is what type of a camper you are. So if you're gonna buy a solar panel just to do a trip once in a blue moon, you might go away like Easter, you know, Christmas or whatever, you might do a couple of trips a year. Uh, I highly suggest you stick to the cheaper or the lower end of the market just to save your money and put that towards some other uh, gear that you, you utilize more often. If you're gonna do it like a big lap around Australia, I'd highly suggest you get a really good uh, portable unit, right? Something like the Blue Eddy, or you can even go a little bit higher and go like the Red Arc, for example. Um, but like the Red Arc panel, for example, the 120 watt, it's, it's almost like 530 bucks. Whereas sometimes you can get the King stuff on special for like $120, right? So it's a massive difference between the cheap and the expensive uh, gear. If you're going once, twice a year, definitely stick to the lower end or the cheaper end, I should say. And uh, if, you're, you, if you're relying on this gear to get you through, definitely invest a little bit more money in solar panels. That's a long and short of it, guys, to be honest. Uh, whichever panels you choose, it's just personal preference. But I'll go through a list that I've got, just my personal opinion again, of some things that I like um, and just I've tried to categorize them a little bit. But uh, yeah, look, if you agree with me, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, tell me what you think your number one is. And uh, if you'd like me to do some other tests with some other brands, um, let me know and I'll, I'll see if I can get my hands on some of them. The easiest to use hands down uh, is a King's 120 watt panel. I love this panel because it's so small. Uh, for me, I've got a ute, so I can literally just drop the tailgate down and the panel fits on the tailgate and you can leave it there, go away, throw it on the ground. It's cheap, so if it gets damaged and stuff, I mean, who cares? You just throw it out in a couple of years or whatever and get another one. It's not the best quality, but for a hundred and something dollars when they're on special, I think they're normally about 200, uh, you can just buy one of them and you know give them hell and use them until they die, basically. Um, yeah, they're not, a very, they're not a bad panel for what you pay. Uh, the best overall quality 
uh, hands down goes to the Bluity MP200. Like I mentioned in part one, just some of the small details on the unit, the fact that it's got a nine layer construction, it just, it feels like it's hard to explain on the video, but it feels so much better than all the other panels. Just uh, like the texture and the construction of it, the handles, uh, the IP rating as well, it's rated IP67, which is fantastic. You can peg that sucker down and leave it in, you know, almost a hailstorm and, and you'll be fine. So that's definitely my favorite in terms of quality. The smallest and the, and the best one that packs away, I think is gonna go down to the hardcore uh, 300 watt panel. It packs super small. Uh, it's great if you're, you know, you got, you got um, space restrictions and whatever, it packs into just some really nice nooks and crannies, whereas a lot of the other panels are quite large when they pack up. Although this was by far the most disappointing panel watt for watt. Uh, and again, this panel wasn't brand new and I, I mentioned this in my first, uh, in the part one of this solar panel review. Uh, so keep that in mind, but just in my testing, with all the pitting and the, the damage on the panel, I mean, you, you expect more for a very expensive panel. Uh, the most disappointing panel, I've got to say, is the King's 200 watt panel. As you saw with the shading issue, to me, that's just a redundant panel. I mean, you're not always going to have full sun all the time with, with solar panels. And that full shading pick even comes down to things like, you know, shadows from trees, but even clouds. Like, as you saw in the video, um, some really cloud environments just dictate whether the, the panel even works or not, which is super disappointing. And again, I don't know if there's something wrong with this solar panel or whether they're all like that, uh, but just look, bear in mind, these are my results again, but yeah, I wouldn't recommend the 200 watt from the Kings. Another conclusion that I come up with was whether you're gonna use these daily, as in rip these out all, every day, uh, or whether you're gonna set up and leave it there for, for a fair while. Uh, the long-term setup, like say you rock up somewhere for a week or two, uh, I like, I actually really like the King's folding panel. So it's the 250 watt. It is a hefty unit, it's quite heavy, but that's also a positive because once you set it up, you don't have to worry too much about the wind uh, blowing it over, and it feels like a super robust unit, and it is fairly easy to clean. And as you saw with the results earlier, they were pretty good for a 250 watt cheap panel, right? Uh, if you're on the move every day, the best panel I recommend for um, just again, the longevity, and, and, and again, this is going back to using the panel daily, so you want a good quality panel, highly recommend the Bloity MP200. Uh, super easy to set up. Um, again, we've spoken about the, the, all, the, all the benefits of that. The fact that you can lay them flat or, or keep them raised, that's a really good benefit with those legs that are super easy to deploy. It's got a great warranty and really good customer feedback as well. So definitely um, another plus to the Blue Eddy. All right, we'll wrap this video up. Thanks so much again for tuning in, guys. I really appreciate it. Let me know in the comments down below, did the test results sort of meet your expectations? Were they what you were expecting? Did anything stick out and shock you? Let me know which solar panel you'll pick out of the bunch or which one you're rocking at the moment and which one you've had your eye on. That'd be great. Till next time, guys, we'll catch you later. See ya.